The topic of today's video will be something I doubt many of you have ever thought about. I will be giving you a recipe of some sort to break up a quadrilateral into precisely seven kites. If for some strange reason you were explicitly searching for this video, you're welcome. But for the majority of you, there must have been something strange which triggered your curiosity and made you click. Not only will I satisfy your curiosity, but I will close off this video with an open follow-up question aching for someone to solve. The statement of the problem is, suppose I give you a quadrilateral, in particular a convex quadrilateral, that is, or the angles in this shape are less than 180 degrees. Prove that you can always dissect this quadrilateral into precisely seven convex kites. Just so we're all on the same page, by a dissection, I mean some sort of division of the shape using only straight cuts with no leftover area. Now, this problem seems fiddly at first. If we just go through arbitrarily making cuts, more often than not, we'll end up with seven kites and some leftover area, or we might not even get seven kites at all. Also, looking back at the problem, why seven? There must be some specific reason as to why seven is precisely the number chosen. What we really want is some general approach to dissect any convex quadrilateral into seven kites. It's challenging to approach this problem at first, so a reasonable idea would be to consider a shape simpler than a quadrilateral, a triangle, and rather than seven kites, let's see what the minimum number of kites we can get is. Clearly, we can't dissect a triangle into one kite because, well, it's a triangle, but how about trying to get two kites? Well, if we make one cut, then one of the leftover shapes will be a triangle, not a kite. If we make three or more cuts, then we'll have a polygon with five or more sides. Again, not allowed. Hence, we must use two cuts, but one of the resulting shapes will be convex, and the other concave. However, by definition, a kite is convex, so this is impossible. Therefore, we'll have to step it up to trying three kites. Now, in fact, this is possible, and it's always possible. But how might you go about constructing this? Well, we'll use the in-circle. That is, the unique circle tangent to each side of the triangle. But a circle, you may ask. How in any way is a circle relevant? Well, a circle possesses this wonderful property that every radius of a circle has a constant length. Even more importantly, kites have two pairs of adjacent sides of equal length. This suggests we should draw the three radii of the in-circle, which contact each side of the triangle. You might start to see where this is going. First, for convenience, I'm going to label the vertices of the triangle as A, B, and C, and the in-center as I. Also, label these contact points as IA, IB, and IC. In fact, all the quadrilaterals I've highlighted on the screen are kites. We can see this by zooming in on I, IB, A, IC, and using the fact that tangents meet the radii at 90 degrees, we can spot a pair of congruent triangles, which tells us that A, I, B equals A, I, C. Now, you might think that's it. We just split up our starting quadrilateral into triangles and split each triangle into three kites. But wait, this only gives us a multiple of three of number of kites. So the best we can do is six kites, which isn't good enough. But this idea of using an in-circle to generate kites is extremely powerful and generalizable, which brings us on to the idea of a tangential polygon. 
you're probably more likely to be familiar with the idea of a cyclic polygon. That is, a polygon whose vertices all lie on the same circle. On the other hand, a polygon is said to be tangential if there exists a circle where all the sides of this polygon are tangents to this circle. Now, we take for granted that every triangle has an incircle. However, this isn't true as we increase the number of sides. This is because if we consider the equation of a circle, we have three degrees of freedom, the radius, the x coordinate of the sensor, and the y coordinate of the sensor. This means that a triangle having three sides uniquely defines a circle. However, this won't work for a polygon with four or more sides, so we need some further restrictions. Let's look at the case of a tangential polygon with four sides. First, let's draw the tangential quadrilateral ABCD. We know from before, if we construct the four radii which meet each side of the quadrilateral, then we form four kites, so we can label some of these side lengths as P, Q, R, and S, as shown. It follows that AB plus CD equals P plus Q plus R plus S, but AD plus BC equals P plus S, plus Q plus R. Hence, AB plus CD equals AD plus BC. This result is known as Pitot's theorem. And in fact, the converse of this theorem is true as well. That is, if AB plus CD equals AD plus BC, then the quadrilateral must be tangential, given that it is convex. I leave it as an exercise for the viewer to prove this converse. Just as a hint, consider the circle tangent to three of the four sides, and then by contradiction, show that the fourth side is also tangent. This is a part of the problem where it's important that our quadrilateral is in fact convex, as this proof won't work if our quadrilateral is concave. We can now say that a convex quadrilateral ABCD is tangential if and only if AB plus CD equals AD plus BC. Returning to the original problem, now we know a tangential n-gon can be split into n kites using its incircle. We also know that a tangential quadrilateral can be split into four kites and any triangle can be split into three kites. And it just so happens that four plus three is seven. Isn't it wonderful when everything just works out? Now, given any arbitrary convex quadrilateral ABCD, we just have to assemble the details of our proof. Our approach will be to split ABCD into a triangle and a tangential quadrilateral, and the kites should immediately follow. However, what happens if our starting quadrilateral itself was tangential? Although this may feel like a dead end, all it takes is a bit of ingenuity to spot that the kite itself is tangential, because the sum of pairs of opposite sides are equal, hence it obeys Pitot's theorem. Hence, we can divide ABCD into four kites, and then choose one of these kites to further divide into four more kites, it leaves us with precisely four plus four minus one equals seven kites, the magic number of this problem. Now all that remains is to check when our original quadrilateral ABCD was not tangential, then can we always split it up into a triangle and a tangential quadrilateral? Before I show you the final solution, pause and try to think this through yourself. Done? Well, to complete the problem, First, without loss of generality, let's suppose that AB plus CD is greater than AD plus BC. Now, introduce some point E on the line segment CD and consider the quadrilateral ABCE. When E coincides with D, then we know that by definition AB plus CE 
is greater than AE plus BC. Now, imagine sliding the point E along the line segment CD until E coincides with C. Now, the line segment CE equals zero and we're left with the triangle ABC. The triangle inequality states that the sum of the two sides of a triangle is always greater than the third side of the triangle. Hence, AB is less than AC plus BC. However, we can rewrite this as AB plus CE is less than AE plus BC using the fact that E and C coincide, so the segment CE equals zero. But what does this all mean? Well, as we slide the points E along the line segment CD, we go from AB plus CE is greater than AE plus BC to AB plus CE is less than AE plus BC. And hence, since these values vary continuously, the intermediate value theorem states that at some point between C and D, we must have had equality between AB plus CE and AE plus BC, which is exactly what we need with the quadrilateral ABCE to be tangential, and hence this completes the problem. For those of you who want to play around with this problem and the final configuration, I've left a GeoGebra link in the description which you can mess around with. In conclusion, while the problem statement itself seems rather random, what we've done is broken it down both physically and metaphorically and gained some deeper insight about the Euclidean geometry hiding behind this question. As for the follow-up question I promised at the start of the video, it might be worth investigating. For which values of n is it always possible to dissect any convex quadrilateral into n kites? And what happens if we remove this restriction of convexity? As far as I know, these are still open problems, and the true difficulty seems to lie in proving that you can't dissect a quadrilateral into n kites for particular values of n. I would love to see any sort of progress made on these problems from the community. And speaking of the community, I'd just like to say how grateful I am for the support I've received in the last few videos. I wasn't too sure where this channel would go, but I've gained some real motivation to keep putting out better and better videos. But anyway, thank you for watching till the end, and I'll see you in the next video.